And three, two, one, boom. And we're back in another episode of Socratic Gamers. This is Socratic Dialogue. It's ironic we started off with the boom on this one, even though we always start off with the boom because we're talking about world peace. World mm. peace. So achievable or not achievable? That is the question. Oh, it's very much achievable. <laughs> True. Very much achievable. Um, but by what means and how? So before we actually get into the actual like ins and outs of what world world peace is and how to achieve it Mm. um it's interesting to think that from the very beginning as like like sperm cells that are making it to an egg Mm -hmm. we're already thrown into competition right you know what i mean but we we never think about that like you you hear like a lot of like um namasteers out there being like oh you you know what i mean like those like spiritual spiritual gurus being like oh or beings of love and all that, et cetera, et cetera. But like, how do you, how do you explain like, like beating out all the other ones? Yeah. I guess technically you're not killing them, but you're like competing. It's, against, a, it's a competition, yeah. You know, and like from from that, I, I would say that like, well, first off, all animal kingdom competes with one another yeah. because there's like limited resources. Do you know any other like, um, any perfect? animal species that like rests in harmony that doesn't do any some like any sort of destruction. well if it's not between themselves it might be with others other types of species like right, i'm thinking like like lion kingdoms right you know what I, what I mean is like uh like like the bonobos okay within themselves they might be really nice to each other bonobos are the closest ones to humans that we said uh we're cousins and them and chimpanzees Chimpanzees is like the opposite of them. But they're we're really, cousins of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So, yeah, go on. So, like, but then they might be uh, probably different with other species, right? Oh, okay, okay. I see what you're saying. So, like, so like even though they're they're cool with their own kind yeah. when it comes to, like, other Yeah, animals, I don't know like, enough of it to say for sure, but, like, yeah. It almost seems like, all right, from, from that perspective, okay, so you have no boundaries <laughs> as, like, an animal. Like, for animals, they have no boundaries, mm-hmm. right? They're, there's no, like, walls, no cages to keep them apart. Mm-hmm. But we've created this, like, society that's the delusion of peace. Yeah. Right? The illusion and delusion because, like, mm-hmm. it, it's not real and you think it's real, so it's delusion. Um, but, like, we have walls. But if we didn't have walls, wolves are going to come get us. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so like yeah, yeah. even even in that perspective, it's like, yeah, so like we have human peace mm-hmm. if if we achieve that, but it'll never be like world peace where like nothing will attack us. And that almost seems like completely irrational as well. You know? Right. Because like we're all competing for resources. That's kind of what like the But this is the whole idea of, of evolution, majors. right? That's the evolution right there. Like it's this... You have to beat out yeah, even in evolution actually, because evolution is that you're beating out uh, a not important property or something like a something you don't need anymore so you mm-hmm. change it you know yeah. i guess people call it adapting but it's like and then they're like well that's not technically competition but it is it's like competition on a ge- in a genetic scale right yeah you know yeah i guess it's like what do you mean by world peace like what do, what do people really like seek when they're seeking world peace i think it's just like a a thing that's been repeated that they don't actually know what they want mm-hmm. and i think it's weird when people are like um like we just need love Mm because it's like what does that mean even like economically speaking like societally speaking yeah it's almost like you didn't look far in and into it enough that you don't Mm -hmm. actually know what it is you're saying you know right it's an idealistic viewpoint but ideals are also diluted right because that's why ideals are like not realistic Mm -hmm. it's an ideal something you're like pursuing right you know but like yeah, I don't know. Because you study the animal kingdom a lot. So, like, is there anything? No, I don't. I don't know. Like, is, is there anything that even, like, because, you know, we're, we're always like, oh, let's get back to nature as well. Yeah. Okay, we should be is, more like animals and stuff, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. But it's like, but do you know how vicious animals can be? Yeah, they are. Yeah. You know, we have this, like, Disney viewpoint of, um, like, bears being nice, but bears will kill you. Yeah. I mean, even within the, the even lions, too, right? Like, they're very. Um, very uh territorial and there's a lot of uh suffering and stuff in that too right it's just not right like, right, right right uh like you just uh, you're always competing that's 
you could lose, easily lose your tribe. Totally, totally. So here's the or thing. pride. He, here's the thing about like uh, suffering that I think people don't really clarify. Mm-hmm. It's like, what is suffering? We think that if you're in pain, it's suffering. But you can be in pain and not be suffering. You're just in pain. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like, um, like let's say I you pull off a amazing trick that you never thought in your entire life, but then like you break your bone in the process. It hurts, but you're not suffering over mm-hmm. the broken bone because right. you're like, oh, you're so stoked at the fact that... Or like fighters, right? They win a world championship. They're not suffering over their pain over a broken nose. Right. They're just like, dude, I actually accomplished that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I think I think suffering... No, I don't think I know. Suffering's in the mind. Like it's a mental thing, you know? Yeah. You can be in pain and not suffer, you know? Mm-hmm. So like, so with the animal thing, it's like, I I don't know if I don't know if there is suffering in the animal kingdom. Maybe there is. Uh, no, no, crows. There is for crows because they they mourn, and mourning is a form of suffering because you're sad. Yeah, but I mean, like, uh, yeah, uh, you're talking about like, like even starvation is suffering. No, um, maybe it depends because like ascetics, right? They'll starve themselves, but for a good cause. So it's like even if you're starving, you're not really suffering because you're doing it for like a glorious cause. Talking about humans? Humans, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Totally. So like, what I'm saying is like suffering is like a mental state, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think all animals have some capacity to like think, but like... But I, I, yeah, um, but I don't think they're... Ne- I, well, I don't know, but I don't think they're necessarily being it like as... Suffering. Yeah. Like it's not like... It's, like suffering is like a desire unfulfilled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? I don't think it's like that. I'm just saying in, yeah, in a sense that w- we are putting that category on it, right? But like it's not really... It's not actually, it, it's, yeah, totally, totally. It, it's like a, it's like, um, it's an unfulfilled viewpoint, just like how we think that bears are all friendly just because we watched like Baloo in Mowgli. Right. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, that's not actually the, the, the reality of the situation at hand. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think that goes the same for like world peace. Right. Because I think that, I think that like the idea of world peace is the exact because you know there, there's like dualities in life right like love is the opposite of hate and hate is the opposite of love right mm-hmm. there's always like the positive and negative yeah. so like i'd say world peace the opposite would be suffering mm-hmm. right but these are just mental states so if you just let go of both mental states then there is no world peace there is no suffering suffering because mm-hmm. then like you're just going with whatever the motion is you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah, yeah. and i think that that's kind of how nature plays itself out too mm. Because, like, they're not, like, if if an asteroid was going to hit the Earth, no animal's going to be like, oh, no, I've only got, you know, seven more days before that asteroid hits. Mm-hmm. They'd have no concept yeah, yeah, of yeah. their imminent demise. Right. So they wouldn't be suffering over it. Right, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like the idea of world peace and the idea of, of suffering are, like, almost like, I don't want to say privileged states, but do you know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. it like, is, it is. Yeah, it is in some, I mean, uh, like who are the ones really bringing that up? The ones who are privileged, right? And the ones that are suffering over no world peace. Yeah. Cause the people that don't really care are already in equanimity. It's the people that like, look, the only reason why you bring up something is cause you're agitated by the thing. Yeah. Right? Like, why did we choose this topic? Because to me, it was aggravating in my mind. I was like, what is this problem I'm trying to explain? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, like, everything that you do is brought on, like, it's cause and effect, right? Yeah. So, like, the people oftentimes who want the most love and peace in the world are the ones starving the most for love and peace. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like, Especially, like, if you look at spiritual gurus, they're all trying to, like, fill a void that they all feel. Mm. And then they're all trying to tell you that, like, there's a void that you should be feeling, too. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, uh, I, once knew, I once knew this guy who was, like, um, I, I would, like, travel. I went to, like, Iceland. And then this guy was, like, oh, it's such a privileged state to be going to Iceland. You're a very lucky person. Trying to make me feel bad about it. Mm-hmm. Whereas, like, I, I wasn't thinking about it from that perspective. But I was, like, oh, it is. And it started to create suffering in my mind of, like, Man, I am in this privileged day, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I should, we should be striving towards like equanimity and like I could use that money towards like food for the homeless. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But then it's like, I was in equanimity. It was you who brought me out of disharmony. Right. Yeah. Into disharmony. Yeah, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? It's like, I was just chilling, bro. And I was like stoked over my trip. But then it's mm-hmm. like, you brought up 
the negativity. Right. Because you were suffering over the fact that, I don't know, maybe you couldn't go on the trip as well, or you wish you had the money to go on the trip. And mm-hmm. like, so, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I find yeah. that that's, and especially in marketing, when you look at it, that's what we're trying to do. We're always trying to like pull at the heartstrings of other people to give them, to get you to give, right? Right. Yeah. It's like, look how much you have and look how much Sally doesn't have, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. It's like, it's like a marketer's playground, you know, playing with perception. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, like, but then sometimes, I mean, these are, those are extremes, right? Like, okay. uh, maybe the extremes help with, I mean, if that's, then it's going into like policy and stuff like that, right? What do you mean? Like uh, politics. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Like certain, how to maybe Govern. alleviate certain stresses or suffering, right? Right. No, totally, ways. totally. It, it's yeah. like this part of the world's like poor. Let's help out. I think I think what we do in this world or what we should do is like you're trying to just do like it summed up the best through this guy. Um, uh, he, he founded Waves for Water, John Rose. Mm-hmm. And his tagline for Waves for Water is do what you love but help along the way. And I heard that like years ago, like maybe 10 years ago. Right. And it's always governed the way I've looked at every single situation. It's like... All I can really do is just do what I'm doing, but like be nice to other people yeah. along the way yeah. and like do my best part. But if it's like, if I'm unhappy, mm-hmm. like it's like, okay, I could either go on this trip or give all that money towards charity. Right. It's like, yeah, you give it towards charity, but it's like, how, is are you happy? And like, how's that money being spent? You know what I mean? Because like, even the way like charity systems are run, like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. one cent of every dollar goes towards the actual end goal right you know yeah so it's like what what is perfect and like what is this ideal we're striving for Mm -hmm. of like again world peace it's like it's diluted it's broken right because the system's broken because like nobody really wants it because nobody even knows what it is Mm -hmm. you know it's like explain like if you ask anyone like what is world, it's like it's like the words like enlightenment and like um I, i actually wrote about this um, people confuse or they like conflate m- means they like mix up mm-hmm. the the two words like enlightenment and um, enlightenment and samadhi yeah right but it's like they're not the same things enlightenment is like where you like learn something you get a revelation but samadhi is where you let the mind go it's like no mind oh, right right but it's like so it's sort of like so when the people use it interchangeably, I always ask, like, what do you even mean? You know, I went to Thailand one time, and we went to a, a Buddhist monastery, and I'm like, what is enlightenment? Like, explain it to me. Because mm-hmm. we did this monk chat thing. And it was like, you can ask them any question, and they can ask mm-hmm. you questions. Like it's, like, it's a way for them to teach English, right? So I was like, okay, like, like what does enlightenment mean? Right. And, and nobody could answer me. They, were, like, they answered me, but it was very, like, aloof. It was like, like it is this amazing feeling of everything being perfect. And I was like, well, what does that mean though? Like, how do you achieve that? You know, and like, you achieve that by becoming like Buddha. And like, this makes no sense, right? Like you're just, you're repeating catchphrases that you have no idea what they actually mean. Right. Right. I kind of feel, again, same way about world peace. It's like, what does world peace even look like? Mm -hmm. You know? The the utopian society, right? Totally. Utopian society, but the problem with the utopian society is somebody will ultimately be angry. You can't... So, okay, if you look at it as basis level, right? World peace. Okay, world peace means that we all get along and we all agree upon one thing. Right. Right? Yeah. Ideally, that's Mm -hmm. what it means. Mm -hmm. Okay. Take 10 people and you're like, where do you want to go for dinner? Yeah. yeah. Boom. (laughs) It's not perfect, right? I Mm -hmm. I don't want Chinese. Oh, I don't really want this. Oh, I want this, right? So it's like, okay, so then you compromise, right? So is is compromisation world peace? Not really, Mm -hmm. because you're all still kind of upset. And at the same time, that's only 10 people. What if you make it a million, seven billion? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, how? Impossible. Mm -hmm. World peace is impossible. Yeah. I, and, I uh-huh. it just I mean realistically because everyone's in a different uh, like demographic in in in, in uh, class system and stuff like that right totally exactly we're all we all want different things too it's like it's like the dinner article yeah. uh, the dinner question so it's like okay ten people where do you want to go for dinner I want to go to Mumufuku okay I want to go to McDonald's it's like but I don't have enough money for Mumufuku mm-hmm. so we're in different levels so I can't even join you at Mumufuku because it's so expensive right. 
You know what I mean? So it's like you're even battling with that. Mm-hmm. So again, you can't achieve world peace. The one I love is when people are like, if aliens came, do we achieve world peace? Because you'd have one common enemy. That's a lie. Because somebody's going to be like, yeah, kill the rest of the world. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, I want the aliens to win. Right. You know what I'm saying? No, but that doesn't mean, also doesn't mean uh, like all of a sudden you achieve world peace also. It's just like maybe for the temporary time, then it's going to come back. So you're right. To, right. Like, okay, we defeated the aliens. It just... I mean, again, this is all. But if you're looking, if you're looking at totally, totally, if you're looking at like temporary states, okay, so like let's take that. So it's like for a temporary moment in time, you'll achieve world peace. Mm-hmm. Okay, so my question is, how long of that temporary moment do you want? Because I'm sure in one millisecond, everyone on Earth at some point was at equanimity. For one millisecond, do we achieve it? Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It's like from that point of view, it's like okay, we've already achieved world peace. Mm-hmm. For a millisecond only, though. So how many years do you want? 10, 20, 30? <laughs> doesn't really freaking matter. Because at the end, it's like you're not going to go back to that. It's never, it's never going to be perfect. But yeah. people that seek perfection are unhappy with their imperfect lives. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Because at the end of the day, world peace is peace of mind. You know? You're like, the only reason why you're seeking out world peace is because you're agitated. But if you weren't agitated, like, okay, go... If you have a family, go with your family to the beach and have a fun time. Are you thinking about world peace? No. Your world has been at peace. Yeah, right. Was so it's like, chill out, bro. Mm. You know? It's only when you stop and you think about it because it's only the mind that suffers and also pines for world peace. But if you actually look at it, like, pining for world peace is suffering. Mm-hmm. That's why the Buddha said, that's what, not the Buddha, sorry, the Zen monks are like, there's nobody to save. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Because at the end of the day, it's like, we're already at peace. It's only you who's creating non-separation. You know, you're, you're, it's only you who's creating disharmony out of your own harmony. Mm-hmm. Let that go and we're good. That's why, that's again, that quote, like, let go and be free. That's what they mean. It's like, let it go, bro. Yeah, and yeah, we're yeah. cool. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But a lot right. of people can't do it, you know? Uh, but if you looked yeah. into it, it's like, literally, that's what, that's what aggravates me. It's like, people who are like, harping on, like, they're begging for world peace. It's like, look into it deeply enough Mm -hmm. and then you tell me after actually studying it like if you if you studied economics you study business you studied like spirituality and you come away with the answer for world peace well it's impossible like my my whole argument about the going to like um actually no, no 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 i know how you achieve world peace robots we all just become robots. Mm. Because then we have no desire, and then we can achieve world peace. Yeah, yeah. Right. Because desire is the only thing separating us from world peace. Mm. <laughs> but then we also have, like, nothing to do. It's like, hey, where do you want to go for dinner? I don't know where you want to go. I don't know where you want to go. And you're just going to say that for a million years until all of you die of starvation. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, but this is not the society we live in. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, I, is it, so what, what brings about that? Like, is it uh, guilt? Can guilt be? Like, yeah, I see that. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like have an impact as to why you, oh, like someone's not having the same thing, but like. Yeah, I can see that. Like, yeah. But see, if you go back to that original principle of like, do what you love and help along the way, it's mm. like, that's why like Bill Gates's thing, his like foundation, they gave like. Two point eight billion to like charity or something like that, mm-hmm. and they they abol- they've almost abolished polio around the world. There's only like twenty eight cases left or something like that, and the only place they can I was watching the David Letterman thing. They're talking about it, and like, like the the only place that polio still exists is in war countries where they can't actually get to because there's like war. Yeah, right. But they've like almost obliterated it off the entire face of the earth. Again, he's not saying I'm going to achieve world peace. He's just doing his part. So it's like. The most you can do is just within your sphere of influence, like help, mm. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's the ultra privileged can do that. <laughs> Only the ultra privileged, totally, totally. That's why I said, like, world peace is a privileged state. Well, actually, no, no, world peace is suffering. Like, if you want world peace, you're suffering. Right. But if you want to help other people to achieve, alleviate some suffering, mm-hmm. 
it's a privileged state. Okay. No yeah, poor person's right. get well. If you look at your sphere of influence, if you have, all right, let's say you're poor, and then you hear somebody that's like, oh, I just want a friend, and then you spend time with them. I mm-hmm. mean, that didn't really cost money. Right. So it's like, you can still alleviate suffering. Mm-hmm. There's levels to it, you know? Yeah, there's levels, yeah. Right. Yeah. You can only, like, True. you can only do so much. And at the end of the day, you also have to accept the fact that you can only do so much. Like, I'm sure Bill, Bill and Melinda Gates aren't killing themselves over the fact that they couldn't get the last 28. They're like, makes sense. Like, we can't get in that zone. Like, you, you play within the rules of the system you're in. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I can't get there, so it's cool. Except your... Actually, that's funny. There was... um. There's like in the book Essential Zen that I was I finished reading, it's like um, it, there's a passage about world peace in there, and it was saying that like I'm gonna strive for it, but if I can't make it, I can't make it, and that's how it ended, right? And it's like yeah, you just have to accept like what what you did with your life, right? You know, you can't do everything, but you can try. Yeah, yeah. You know, right, right, right. But like to just know what. Like, is the realistic? I mean, that's just how I view things, I guess. Like, what, what do you mean? Like, is it realistic? Like, in a realistic sense, you can... That, I get it's your, it's your life. You could do what you want, right? But then, to necessarily achieve certain things, it's like... It's... Uh, if it's not only in your control, then... You know, you just got to be accepting of... Actually, yeah, no, 100%. I know what you're saying. So there's um, there's two books. Um, it's not blank. Outliers. Mm-hmm. Outliers 1. And um, I forgot the other book. It's called Lucky. All right, it's Outliers and Lucky Something. I forgot what it's called, but you can check out books.lmfr.com. It's Lucky Something. Um, so basically what it says is all the successful people in the world are only there because of the happenstance. It's not actually them. Like There are so many billions of smart people in this world, but it's mm-hmm. like everything had to have aligned perfectly. Right. Even really successful people like um, Obama talks about that too. He's like, I'm not the smartest. It's just my life led me to this point. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's like cause and, cause and effect, right. you know? Yeah. Oh, true. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's just, yeah, realistic sense, I guess, right? But, that's... but like, we, we hope. You know that story of, like, Pandora's mm, Box? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, Pandora's Box, the seven um, deadly sins or something, so, came, yeah, came, yeah, out, yeah, yeah, yeah. came out of the box, and then the last thing that came out of the box was hope. Yeah. Right? But people forget that. Like, that's the full tale, that the last thing was hope. And why? Because, like, hope is, like, actually really bad for you. Because mm-hmm. you're, like, you're putting something real aside for your desire you know right and it's yeah it's unrealistic Mm -hmm. you shouldn't hope for things you should work towards them yes yeah 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 it's sort of like the secret you know those people are like oh if i just sit at home and envision it it's gonna come true it's like no but you have to put in the work oh uh this guy joe rogan podcast aura at labora work and prayer Mm -hmm. uh pray and work so like you have to a lot of people are just praying, but nobody's working. Right. You know? Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Right? Interesting, right? Mm-hmm. And then it's it's interesting, too, like, when you look at the people that get, like, upset and jealous, like, how come you got to that position and I didn't? Mm-hmm. But it's like, but you didn't put in the work. Like, I prayed for it, too, but I also worked, you know? Right, right. Yeah, true. If, if you're listening mm-hmm. to this podcast in, like, the way future and, like, it's become, like, successful, you're going to be like, oh, wow, how did they do blah, 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 But it's like, no, like, look at all the work, you know? It's like, it's not. It's nothing. You know? It's just like, you just got to do it. Yeah, we forget we forget the, the start of things, right? Like Totally. There's, there's a lot of stuff that, like, has been out on the internet that only gets, like, famous years later. Yeah. Have you noticed that? Like, like, um, mm-hmm. like something will come back. Like, it has, like, ebbs and flows. You know, when it first comes out, it's not... Mm-hmm. Or, uh, mm-hmm. perfect example, uh, I just listened to the podcast. Lil Bow Wow. You yeah. remember Lil Bow Wow? Yeah. His first album only sold, uh, right off the gate, 200,000 200, records. Right. 200,000 sales. And um, 
at that point, the interviewer was like, well, how come they didn't just cut you? Because if you make 200000 people are just going to be like, cut your losses, right? But he's like, the record company saw, even though I made 200000 like the hordes of fans that were obsessed with me. Mm-hmm. You know, like it was like some Michael Jackson style. Like he would go to the mall and he'd be like, encased in it and they couldn't leave right yeah they had to like sneak out but they're like but he only sold 200,000 like no there's star power here we gotta like stick with this kid Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. then like uh eight months down the line he sold like a million they're like wait how did that happen and then six months later he sold another million they're like wait what it just takes on it takes a while for like ideas to catch up you know what i'm saying yeah yeah, yeah. but it's like gotta put gotta look at the work gotta look at the work you put on Mm -hmm. put in Mm -hmm. eddie griffin was another one like he said he won class clown every single year, but he didn't think there was like an actual thing to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like his <laughs> his cousin was like they were like he was broke, and his cousin's like, hey, I bet you you won't go up on stage as a joke. Went up, killed it, <laughs> and the people were like, oh, he, like he only supposed to have five minutes, but he spent forty five minutes up there, and they told him like you can't come back because you're like kind of stealing the show. Yeah, and like your your jokes were like too. Um, graphic for them mm-hmm. but then he's like okay so then he just like went and called like different places to like book himself time he's like well let me just see how far i can take this thing and he put in the work right you know yeah he yeah. didn't just pray for it he, he worked for it you know mm. yeah, yeah i mean that's the thing we all forget i guess that it takes work yeah everything, you, everything takes work I mean. you know what it is we get caught up in the delusion that we forget the reality of the situation at hand. Mm-hmm. And that's why people think that it'll work if you just pray for it versus just working for it. Yeah. And at the same time, that's also why people believe that world peace is achievable when the only peace you seek is the peace in your mind. Right. You know? Mm. Like, we, we're not looking objectively at any situations. We're, like, hoping for it right. to be the way that yeah, we yeah, believe yeah. it to be. It's like idealism on crack. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. But I think that's why the lottery's so big. We hope to win? Yeah. Yeah. People hope to win. Um, but we, like, yeah, I mean, but knowing statistically the chances, right? And like, it's. Just, but you and, hope. Exactly. You know? that's, that's how it works, right? That's how it sells. But, like, logically, it, it, you know, the likelihood of you winning is not. So low, right? Yeah, it's so very, very low. Yeah. It, it's funny they asked Eddie Griffin like how he was in like Compton right and he's like I was surrounded by Crips and like oh have you ever joined like a gang and he's like no my only gang is me myself and I <laughs> and then he's like the reason why is because like why am I going to be on the corner taking all the risk and then I give the money back to the dealer yeah he's like it never made sense to me if I'm going to take a risk I'm going to take a risk fully for myself mm. and it's like yeah that made sense like But again, people are like hoping. I think people seek out a leader. People seek out order in a world of chaos. Right. And if they can't achieve order, then the mind goes crazy. Mm -hmm. Right. But if you just embrace chaos, then it's all good all the time because the world is chaos. Yeah. You get hit by a car, you're like, okay, this world is chaos. It just happens. (laughs) You know, it's going to suck, you know. Because nobody wants to be hit by a car and nobody wants to lose a loved one. But it's mm-hmm. like, if you embrace the chaos that this is just the ride of life, then what else is there to do except enjoy it? Right. You know? But again, that's that's something you <laughs> you taught me when I was going through that nihilism thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, but you guess you need people that, like that around you, right? That, that's what do you mean? The oh. order seekers? Mm-hmm. yeah totally that's so funny I was in the car with Terry yesterday and then she was like cause I was like oh yeah like everybody cause like it's again idealistic and hopeful that everyone should achieve their dreams mm-hmm. right but it's like but if there weren't sick people I wouldn't have a job right and it's like yeah that totally makes sense like you have yeah. to appreciate the Taoism in there yeah. it's like your job is to heal people if everyone cause I was saying like oh it would be cool if like if everyone followed their dreams we'd all just have doctors and lawyers I wouldn't have sick people, Mm -hmm, you know, but it's like, but you can't live in that world because everyone's got to play their part. Yeah. Remember that thing you said, like, we need janitors or we need unhappy people. Well, yeah, I get it. Yeah, I'm just, uh, it doesn't necessarily mean you're unhappy, but yeah. No, no, even unhappy people. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Then psychiatrists can be like, hey, man, I'll make you happy. Yeah. Like spiritual leaders can have followers. Big Pharma can pay for Prozac. 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. we need disharmony in order to create life. Mm-hmm. You know? Well, I think maybe on the granular scale, if you look at it at, like, at its, like, smallest point, it's all chaos. But if you look at it at its biggest point, it's all harmony. Mm-hmm. So it's sort of like if you're on Earth, you see all this, like, goings-on, right? But then if you're in space, you see, like, a blue blue dot. And you're like, oh, it looks harmonious. Mm-hmm. You know, but then if you go zoom in, you're like, oh, so much chaos going on. You know? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's sort of like, at a middle, and like if you look at my, like our skin, it's like, oh, it looks like it's not moving. But then you go to like an atomic level and you're like, wow, it's so much like vibration going on. Because mm-hmm. nothing's ever like truly still because of science, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, if you're caught up in the little picture, the world's going to suck. But if you just look at the big picture, enjoy the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, true. <laughs> and I feel like this is only like a disease that humans have mm-hmm. versus animals, you know? I mean, we are the only animals that would have that, I guess. Yeah. In that sense. True, yeah. No, totally. Because, and then you're like, oh, why? You know, it's because blah, blah, blah. blah. No, it's like, no, we have a developed cerebral cortex yeah. prefrontal cortex yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. but like, it could also be our own demise so. totally yeah yeah Let's no see. for sure at for sure same time yeah our, our logical processing in our frontal lobe is so like defined as compared to all other animals mm-hmm. and that you know like oh people are like no that's not true it's like do animals set traps for us no because they don't think that far ahead like the frontal the frontal lobe is for pr- reason and problem solving yeah right so it's like that's why we set traps to catch animals if animals had the same degree as us they'd be setting traps yeah but they don't mm-hmm. so it's like no we just just is how it is you know <laughs> yeah. yeah oh canada so he voted for vish uh i thought this is private no i know <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to talk about the blackface thing now? Yeah, you want Indian to. Indian face? I don't know. It's called brown face. Brown face. Well, he wasn't even Indian though. All right, he was. Uh, An Arabian. He was like Aladdin or something. Yeah. An Arabian. I don't know something like that. All right, what's your point of view? Um. Uh, well, this I'm getting this from the TYT check. Okay. Uh, it's not a thing. Okay. As in, it's not a racist thing because there was never a racist thing around brown face. I like that. Historically. Unlike blackface. I'm going to go with people are so not concerned about policies that we're going to look at these things and make That's it That's the thing. But it's, but, it's like, uh, but, who's, think- but who's the one playing that game, right? Who's the one that knew about this and wanted to get this released, right? But who's the dope that fell for it? Right, yeah. yeah you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, so I, it's know, like, I know. It's like, okay, bro, sure. Yeah. Brown face, blackface, whatever. Could be racist, could not be racist. That's up to you. Right. What is he saying politically? Policy wise. Like, all right, you can name me the fact that there's this photo out there, but can you name me 10 of his policies that he's trying to push Mm -hmm. and the ramifications of those policies? If you can't, then you probably shouldn't be bringing up this photo. Mm -hmm. Right? Because this photo is the most superficial thing. It's like, who cares? That would almost be like talking about it's like sexual sexual orientation. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, who cares at that point, bro? Like, what is it you're trying to change <laughs> in society? Right. That's kind of how I feel. Yeah. No, I agree with that. Yeah. But I mean, like, at the same time, then where you look at Trump, then it's like, well, what about the things that he's done? Just like, you should look at his policies, whatever, and blah, 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 right? It's mm-hmm. like, yeah, I can see that point that, like, you have to look at all aspects of the person before voting for them. Yeah. But the keyword there is all. So, like, you can't just look solely at the transgressions in his personal life Mm -hmm. because he's a professional. Right. There's another idealism, too, with leaders. It's like you expect them to be perfect, you know, Mm -hmm. if you're human. Like, bro, don't don't choose a human then. Let's just all vote for robots. They're perfect. (laughs) Right, yeah. They'll just take the aggregate thing and then give us, like, what they believe would work harmoniously for our species. Mm-hmm. The only threat is they might just think they should kill us. <laughs> right. 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's when you that's get world peace. Yeah. Circling back, that's how you get mm, world peace. They right. just slaughter all of us, and they're like, "Now, now Earth will become a factory for robots." And we do their bidding. No, no, they would just slaughter us because then oh, right. they would kill us because in case we wanted to revolt, mm. you know what I'm saying? They 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 know we're clever because we created them, so they need to get rid of us. Right. Yeah. True. It's almost like we're their gods. Just like we had gods, but we had to kill, they had to kill us as their gods in order to survive, just like we had to kill our mm-hmm. gods. But if you look at it, the way we killed our gods was the same way they killed Tinkerbell. <laughs> right. I don't believe in you anymore. Boom! <laughs> Death of a fairy. Right. Think about that one. Mm-hmm. All right. So we're going to watch, what's that movie? Ad Astra? The- Bad, Brad uh, bad. Pitt. The Brad Pitt movie. Yeah, we're gonna check out the Brad Pitt movie next week, and we're gonna hopefully talk about that one. Yeah, something lighter. So until next time, uh, let go of your desire, and world peace will already be upon you. Might not be for the next dude, but you'll be chilling. So who cares? Yeah, sure. I guess. I mean, or you can play more Call of Duty. I guess. That's true. Yeah, divert your ch- your attention elsewhere. Yeah. Till next time. Take it easy. Bye. Peace.